Hi everyone, welcome to the Monday live stream. I am so happy to see so many people here in the chat early. It's so much fun to see people watching from all over the world. And what I love most about these Mondays is people are continually coming back and asking everyone, how was your week? How was your garden? How are things going for you? Even personal questions about how was your surgery this week? People are really sharing and enjoying each other's company here on the live videos. So say hello in the chat if you haven't yet. And I wanna welcome, I know there's some new time viewers as well. So I wanna welcome you to our live streams. You're gonna absolutely love being part of this community. So just um, send me a little message here in the chat if you can see me and hear me okay. My computer is kind of wonking out here next to me, so I'm hoping the signal is coming through here on my phone, which I usually live stream from my phone. So today's topic is all about peppers. And I just want to turn the camera here a little bit so you guys can see where I'm sitting here in the middle of my garden. Um, it's a cool and cloudy day here. It's around 60 degrees, maybe 65 here in SoCal. So good, I'm glad you guys can hear me okay. Um, I know a lot of you are still experiencing the cold weather up in Canada. We have watchers, uh, viewers from Arizona that are in the 80s. Um, oh, Cole from Nova Scotia, that's wonderful. I'm glad to see you back here again today, Cole. You've been uh, gone for a while, so welcome back. And our moderator is Christy everything sunflowers and more. So today we're gonna to be talking about peppers. So get your questions ready about peppers. I'm gonna be sharing three tips that I found very helpful for growing peppers. And I do want to hear about all of the um, varieties of peppers that you're growing, what you enjoy growing, and some of your tips on peppers too. So we have people here from SoCal, Beverly, Jason from Lancaster, South Carolina, Neithra, Michael from Philly, Yaman Marie from Maryland. I know Alinas is here from uh, Puerto Rico. Cole from Nova Scotia. And I believe Brandon is here from South Africa. So welcome everyone. Before I jump into the live stream, I do want to mention my spring sale. I know a lot of you have taken advantage of that over the weekend, but I am having a spring sale on my website. All of my seed collections, all 18 of them, and the Cali Kim Smart Pots containers are on sale. Today is the very last day. So don't waste any time. Head over to my website, calikimgardenhome.com. Use the code SPRINGSEEDS for 15% off. Now I am running a little bit low on my Smart Pots, so if that's something you are interested in, make sure you head over there even as we're live streaming and pick yours up before they run out. I will be restocking them, but sometimes it takes a week or so for me to restock. So make sure you pick those up. So guys, thank you so much for joining me. I wanna start off by reading the viewer of the week today. And the viewer of the week is Sean Brown. And Sean Brown is from Nova Scotia. I know we have a few viewers from Nova Scotia here as well in Canada. Um, my tiny Tims are starting to grow. Soon I will be transplanting to my Walmart grow bags, which is great. So Sean is just repurposing Walmart, the, the uh, you know, the little, um, fabric bags that you get at Walmart. I can't wait to try them. I'm putting in a full container deck garden. You were one of my inspirations for doing this. I used to have the black thumb of death, and I know some of you can relate to that too. So there's hope for anyone and everyone. You were one of my inspirations for doing this. Um, let's see, our last frost date is May 6th, but I'm not worried about rushing things since I have the perfect corner for growing in my living room. With one corner having three windows giving all daylight. I'd post a picture of them, but I don't know if it's possible on YouTube. I don't see a way to link my picture. Have a beautiful day. So Sean, I just wanna say I am so proud of you for making things work for wherever you're at and growing in a small space. A lot of people think you can't grow if you just have a deck or a patio or a balcony, but you absolutely can. Sean is making it work just by using the fabric grocery store bags that you, um, the reusable grocery sacks and still growing um, his or her, I don't know if it's a girl or a boy, owned food. So I'm so proud of you, Sean. Keep it up, way to go. And congratulations for being viewer of the week this week. So I believe that camera guy is in the house um, watching on his lunch break at work he's under um, the Cali Kim name there in the chat so glad he's here and I did want to let you guys know too you might have noticed on YouTube I am posting kind of trying a new format during the week <laughs> hi honey um, posting a new format during the week some videos called coffee walks so hopefully you guys have been enjoying those I'm gonna be posting two to three of those during the week they're designed to be very short quick videos just as I'm enjoying my coffee walk which 
that I love to do every morning. Um, just have a cup of coffee, walk around the garden, share some quick tips for you guys. So make sure you tune into those during the week um, uh, on the, my YouTube channel and send me some comments about some things that you'd like to see in the garden on the coffee walk. So Angela, great. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Um, I'm really enjoying them too. Okay. How it's going to work is I'm going to share a, a tip about growing peppers and then we'll jump into the chat and answer some of your questions. So please be patient as the chat is flying by really fast. Okay, first tip to growing peppers. Number one, peppers absolutely love the heat. So they do great um, outside when the temperatures are between 60 and 90 degrees. That's their ideal growing temperature. The warmer, the better. So um, if you have warm temperatures where you live, they're gonna do wonderful in the summertime. And even if you live in the north and things are not so warm there, you wanna put them in the sunniest spot you possibly can in your garden. And that will really help them um, grow really well. Now, if you're germinating peppers from seed and planting peppers from seed, what you wanna do is, some people um, say they have a hard time growing them from seed. So what you wanna do is germinate them on a heat mat. So start them indoors under grow lights, Get yourself a little heat mat. I'll, I believe there's a link in the video description when this video uploads. And if you place your little seed starting tray on a heat mat, it will just give them that little bit of extra bottom heat that they need to germinate. So here I've got a little tray of peppers that I started inside in these little um, three inch peat pellets. And I started them, let's see, the 29th of March. So it's been just a little over um, a month or so and they're growing absolutely beautiful. I just have been hardening them off over the past couple of weeks and I'm gonna be planting these outside this week in the garden. So plant them in a very sunny spot, plant them, uh, start them from seed on a heat mat and you wanna get them planted outside after your last frost date. So one of the things a lot of people struggle with it with peppers is they get them outside too soon when your nighttime temperature are still in the 40s and they really the peppers don't do much and guys the gardeners next door just got here so I'm sorry if there's noise there's not much I can do about that uh, hopefully you guys can hear me let me know if you have any problems um, so peppers absolutely love the heat um, in cooler climates what you can do to heat things up is you can cover them with um, like a plastic any, any kind of like a sheet of plastic or even put a um, like a plastic container over them at um, nighttime like a milk jug or the plastic nursery pots to help protect them at night and I know Cliff from Idaho is on here and he's the master at getting plants out early and he uses a special thing called a wall of waters where the water inside this little um, wall heats up during the day and then it keeps the pepper, peppers warmer at night. So if you want to get something um, fancy, you could definitely do something like that or just use a sheet of plastic. But then once things warm up during the day, make sure you take it off so they can um, they don't get too overheated. So, um, OK, first tip, peppers absolutely love the heat. So make sure you're growing them in a super sunny spot and they're getting plenty of warmth. OK, let me head to the chat here. I know there are lots and lots of uh, questions flying by. And here's a great question from Rena's Family Garden. Is it too late to start a second round of pepper seeds? And that really depends on your growing season. Um, here in California, I start pepper seeds pretty much all summer long because we have a very long growing season. If you live in a northern climate, um, what you want to do is take a look at the maturity date of your peppers. Um, usually peppers take maybe um, 60 days or so to go 60 to 90 days to go from seed to harvest. So um, sweet peppers, actually, you can harvest them sooner, they mature quicker. Hot peppers take a little bit longer. So you wanna choose a variety that will have plenty of time to mature before the weather gets war uh, cold in your area. So for example, if you get frost in September, you would still have time to start peppers from seed right now and then you'd be ready to get them planted outside probably mid-June and you have a couple of months be for them to mature before the weather gets cold. So you always look at the days to maturity and I think it's actually raining a little bit here right now. I do have an umbrella up right now so hopefully we'll be okay. But um, always look at the days to maturity and then count backwards from the time of your last frost date or when the weather starts to turn cold in your area. Okay, next question here. Nithra, yes, I do sell pepper seeds. I have pepper seeds on my website, my pepper seed collection. 
and you can take advantage of my spring sale and pick some up today. Okay, um, question, more questions here. Organic gardening in North Carolina. Have you seen sweet peppers turn out hot if they're planted too close to hot varieties? I have had that problem on occasion. Um, what I like to try and do, although I didn't do it so much this year, is keep my hot peppers and my uh, sweet peppers separate. So typically I'll plant my hot peppers along this side here of my planter and then um, the sweet peppers kind of on the other side. But this year I decided just to mix them up and I've got um, hot and sweet peppers all over the place and we'll just kind of take our chances and see if hopefully the sweet peppers won't turn out hot. Okay, um, I have some, uh, someone's asking what the plant is behind me and I'm thinking you might mean this plant right here. So this actually is a pepper plant that overwintered last year. It's one of my favorite pepper plants. The seeds were sent to me a couple of years ago by a viewer that lives in India and it's called the Thai chili pepper. It's a really teeny tiny, um, super hot red pepper. You might've seen it maybe if you watched my videos um, last year. But what I did is I, I pruned, it was like way up to the top of the stake here over the summertime. I pruned it way back during the winter time. There were no leaves left. And yes, we are getting rained on. I'm gonna move my um, computer under the umbrella. Hopefully it doesn't get wet. Um, I pruned it way back and peppers will overwinter in warmer climates. And then the leaves are popping out again and we're getting a lot of brand new growth. So I have every confidence this plant will be fully productive again this summer. So I'm really looking forward to um, seeing the peppers. We don't use all the peppers from this plant. There's so many of them, but it's a really beautiful plant, very ornamental and I absolutely love it. Okay, um, let me jump back and talk about our second pepper tip. Oh, my computer's getting wet here. That's not good for a computer. <laughs> I gotta scooch under the umbrella a little bit more. Um, our second pepper tip is, oh, I did wanna mention too, for more in-depth information on growing peppers, um, just growing peppers, is check out my full compilation video on growing peppers from seed to harvest. It's a video I put together of um, all my pepper videos over the past couple of years. And it has a digital table of contents. You can look in the video description and see that and then jump to the part that you are most interested in. And it is really coming down here. I can't believe it. It's kind of fun though to be outside and live stream in the rain. But let me just show you guys, I don't know if you can see behind me on the, the little um, pavers there that it's, it's really coming down. So we've actually gotten quite a bit of rain here in Southern California over the winter time, but this is the first storm we've had in a couple of weeks. So it's kind of fun though to be out here in the rain. Okay, um, next tip, um, check that video out. Check out the pepper seed collection if you need peppers. And the next tip is make sure your peppers have consistent water. So I did see a lot of questions in the chat beforehand about watering peppers. And they do need to have consistent water, especially guys, if you're growing them in a container. And let me just show you um, right back here. I know people were saying, can you grow peppers in a container? Well, and yes, you absolutely can. Peppers are great to grow in containers because um, you can actually grow quite a few in one container. So they like to grow close together. These are growing in my Calicim Smart Pots five gallon and I've got, actually I've got three plants in here. I just realized this little seedling here is actually two plants. But peppers actually kind of like to be touching when they grow um, and that really helps shade them um, in, the, in the hot weather. Once they start to produce peppers, the leaves will kind of shade the fruit so the peppers don't get scalded by the hot sun. So you can definitely grow them in a container, but make sure that you're watering them adequately. Um, you don't want their roots to dry out because then the plants can get stunted. So I like to use a moisture meter for my containers or you can just stick your finger in the soil. And I wish you guys could hear the rain out here. It really sounds pretty cozy. Um, you can just stick your finger in the soil and then if uh, the soil is wet when you pull it up, then um, you don't need to water. Like I just watered this pot this morning, so it's fine. But um, if the soil is dry, you definitely need to water. So um, one reason why it's so important um, to water 
for peppers is they do get susceptible to something called blossom and rot. So if you've ever had your peppers kind of turn brown on the bottom and a little bit mushy, that's called blossom end rot. And usually that's caused by inconsistent watering. So um, you want to make sure that your, um, your soil is evenly moist. You don't want it to be super soggy and like muddy and mucky. Um, but uh, check your the moisture of your soil to make sure that it's getting adequate water. Now my favorite way to water, which to me is the most consistent, is by using drip irrigation. Really easy to install either in containers or in your garden beds. And people ask me all the time, how much do I water my garden? And it's such an individual thing, guys. I wish there was a magic formula, but it's really dependent on where you live, um, what the weather is. If it's hotter, you're, you're gonna need to water more. And if it's raining like it is today, <laughs> I'm not gonna need to water at all. So always just check your, your plants and then eventually you'll get used to um, how often to water in your area, depending on the soil that you have and depending on the temperature. So just a little example, right now it's not real hot here in California and I have my drip irrigation set to water 30 minutes every five days. And for this time of the year, that seems to be um, the magic trick. Now during the summertime when we have 100 degree temperatures, I'm gonna have to probably water every three days or so. But I will, when the, when the weather changes, I'll go out and just do my little you know, moisture meter check or my finger check of the soil to make sure that my plants are getting adequate water. So that being said, make sure you check your containers more often because they'll dry out a lot quicker than your in-ground garden. Okay guys, I know I've done a lot of talking here, so I wanna hear from you guys what questions you have about watering, about peppers, about, um, about anything that we've talked about today. Okay, um, let's see here, questions. What's in the brown pot far behind you? Guys, I'm really sorry about the noise here. It came right when I started live streaming. Okay, if you're talking about, I don't know if you guys can see, okay, there we are. That pot right there. <laughs> okay, that actually is an orange tree. And um, the bottom of the orange tree is are some flowers growing. That's the green leafy things that you see growing. Those are calendula, believe it or not. A couple of weeks ago, I wasn't sure what they were and someone suggested they might be calendula, which is a beautiful bright orange flower. I don't even remember planting those there, but evidently I did and um, they're growing absolutely lovely. Okay, good, I'm glad you can hear me. Okay, um, you have so many videos, this is from Tony. How do you suggest which ones to watch first? Tony, that's a great question. Um, what I would suggest doing is clicking on, I try to uh, organize my videos by playlist. So basically by topic. Um, so if you wanna click on the playlist button on my channel, you can go and see which playlist you're most interested in. I, I uh, have playlists on peppers, on tomatoes, on container growing, drip irrigation, all kinds of topics. If you're a beginning gardener, you may want to watch the spring garden series, which is basically um, starting a garden from seed all the way up to planting it in the ground. Um, but check out those playlists and hopefully you'll find a topic that you're most interested in. Okay, Brandon, one more question here and then we'll go back to our pepper tips. Brandon Jones, this is, I knew I was gonna get this question. Do you top pepper plants? Okay. Um, Brandon, the answer is yes and no. It kind of just depends on what I want to do with that plant. Um, in case you're not familiar with pruning pepper plants, what you can do is when you're, when you're planting them, um, or pretty much any time, you can come in and prune off this growing tip or this you know, first set of leaves right here if you'd like to. And basically what, a, what that does is help the peppers push out leaves to the sides and be a shorter, stockier plant rather than a tall, lanky plant. So I've used both methods before. Um, it, it really just depends on how quickly I want peppers. It's a very optional thing. It's a very, it's a personal preference. If I want peppers very quickly, which I usually do, I won't uh, prune my pepper plants because I want them to grow peppers quicker. Um, if I'm not really in a big hurry or if I wanna try one or the other method, then I will go ahead and prune it and it'll be a, a stockier plant that won't um, you know, topple over in the wind. But a lot of times what I do, guys, is I cage my plants here with these small uh, little tomato cages that you can get at the garden center. It just costs a couple of dollars. And you can see it's just giving it a little bit of support 
so the plant um, you know doesn't fall over once it gets heavy with peppers it's a really easy way to to quickly um, handle that issue so really a personal preference um, you can do whatever you want or try one pruning and one not pruning and see what you work works best for you okay let me jump back into my pepper tips today so the first one is um, uh, they grow in the heat. They love the heat. The second one is consistent watering um, to help with blossom end rot. Um, the thing I forgot to mention there about blossom end rot is you can also add a little bit of handful of garden lime to the soil. It's very inexpensive. You can pick it up at most um, garden centers and that does help with blossom end rot, especially um, in containers. Okay, third tip here is um, consistent fertilizer. I saw someone ask, um, are peppers heavy feeders? And yes, they are because they are producing a ton of fruit. Now, right now is a little bit early. I don't have a lot of peppers on my plants right now because a lot of these I just planted and I'm gonna be planting all those little seedlings I just showed you out this week. But they do need consistent fertilizer. So they're, they're just like us. Like we kind of run out of gas when we don't get food. That's how the peppers are too. You wanna to keep them consistently fertilized throughout the growing season. And um, what you can do is you can, if you're composting in your garden, that's the best kind of fertilizer you can use and it's absolutely free. So if you're not composting, I would highly suggest you start composting. It's very, very simple. I've got lots of videos on how to do that. And you can even compost in a small little container like my Cali Kim Smart Pots right here. So um, you can pick these up on my website. I have a video on showing you how to compost in a small space. Very easy, it breaks down in about maybe a month or so, and you, then you have free black gold to add to your garden. Um, the other thing you can use, which I love, you guys know I use this, is the Vermisterra worm tea. It just provides that slow and steady growth, um, and it really keeps your plants healthy. So we've been using it now for, I wanna say going on three years in our garden, and what, a difference. Uh, our plants just absolutely love it. I fertilize my containers about once a week because the nutrients and the water drain out a lot quicker. And then my in-ground garden, I fertilize maybe once every four to six weeks with the worm tea. So you can get garden sprayers and spray it that mix with water and spray it right on, or you can add it to a water uh, watering can, whatever way works, um, works best for you. Now, I saw someone ask a question. Um, when do you start fertilizing after seedlings, after you're, when you're growing from seed? And let me show you these little seedlings. People always say, my seedlings um, look so healthy and so big for a six week seedling. Um, what I do is once I get the first set of true leaves, and oh, Patricia, thank you so much. Uh, Patricia just um, did a super chat for $5. Patricia, Patricia, I really appreciate that. Patricia is a longtime viewer, and she actually got viewer of the week last week for her wonderful um, recovery from health and growing her own food. So Patricia, thank you so much. I appreciate your generosity in um, showing your appreciation um, for our content here. So um, once the, your seedlings get their first set of true leaves, so here on the bottom is the little um, baby leaf right here. The true leaves are gonna actually look like a pepper, which are the leaves on the top. Once they get their first set of true leaves, I do start fertilizing with the worm tea and with the good dirt plant food, which is higher in nitrogen. So it really provides the nice green leafy growth. So that's why my peppers look so lush and vibrant and green because I use those two fertilizers um, from the time that they're little babies all the way to the time that they're in the garden. And here comes Mac, come here Mac. I don't know if they'll come say hi. Um, so make sure that you use um, the discount codes for those as well, and those will be in the video description, or Christy can pop them in the chat. Okay, um, let's see here, other questions. Can you please do another cooking series? Brayden, um, we'll definitely do some cooking, some more cooking videos as we have harvest, so stay tuned for those this summer. Okay, question. My peppers and tomatoes are getting curled and drying leaves. They were healthy and fertilized and watered. What could I be doing wrong? Okay, um, a lot of times tomatoes do get that tomato leaf curl when there's inconsistent watering or when it gets really hot. Um, peppers, sometimes I've experienced that when, uh, more often than not, 
when it gets too hot or when it gets too cold, like for example, maybe I put them out a little bit too early. We had a cold night. A lot of times I'll see the leaves kind of um, curling or drooping or falling off or when they get too hot. So once it gets over 90 degrees, um, most plants will experience like um, the blossoms will start to drop, the leaves will start to drop. Um, so that could potentially be an issue. If you have problems with your pepper plants, the great thing is, is that you can just prune the leaves right off. So just pinch the leaves off. A lot of times if they're really looking bad, you can completely um, cut them down to like here, just like I showed you earlier. And then the leaves will just kind of branch off from the side. So if that's a big problem for you, maybe you got them out too early and they're stunted, just prune them back. And then as the weather warms up, they should start to branch out and really um, start to look better again. Okay, Kendall, is worm tea an all-around fertilizer for all fruits and vegetables? Looking to purchase some worms soon. Yes, it is. Um, I use the Vermisterra worm tea, which is a very high quality, um, shelf stable tea. Um, you can definitely make your own if you have your own worm castings, but you do have to use your own um, worm tea um, right away so it doesn't uh, grow bacteria and be harmful to your plants. So the Vermisterra worm castings is terrific and a little bit goes a long way. You can use it on anything in your garden, indoor or outside and um, it's gonna really help your plants be um, very healthy. So let me see if I had any other tips I wanted to share with you today. Um, oh, I did want to mention a couple of videos for you guys to check out that will be helpful and give you a little more in-depth information. I do have a couple of videos because I get so many questions on worm tea and worm castings. So you can go and check those videos out for more in-depth information on how to use them in your garden and why they're so effective. And um, also check out the videos on how to water your garden. So that's probably the biggest question I get is how often to water. So um, there'll be links in the video description when this video uploads to YouTube. You can go and check those out. Or if Christy um, can, she can poke, uh, pop them in the chat right now. Okay, so now heading back to the chat here, I think I've talked about all my tips. Make sure uh, you plant your peppers when it's nice and warm. They love the heat. Make sure they're getting consistent water so you're getting a really good pepper crop and you're avoiding blossom end rot. And then my third tip is make sure they're getting consistent fertilizer throughout the growing season so that you're getting lots and lots of peppers. Okay, learn to grow. Hi, welcome. Better late than never, I'm really glad that you're here. Um, let's see, question from Nisha. Oh yeah, I think you had asked this question earlier. Um, my lemon plant buds keep falling off. Is fertilizer well and watered as well? What should I do? Um, Nisha, I would just hang in there with those. Um, I don't know what the weather's like. I think you're in, you're in San Francisco or up north, right? Um, hang in there with those. Also, uh, citrus tends to like a little bit of a drier soil. So it could be that you're over watering or possibly even over fertilizing. So just hang in there, pinch off any leaves that aren't looking so good and hopefully things will, will bounce back. Okay, how long to produce peppers from seedlings? Six weeks old in a pot. Um, it depends on the variety, Amber. Usually sweet peppers you can harvest in about 60 to 90 days if the temperatures are nice and warm. Hot peppers could take a little bit longer, maybe 90 to 120 days. So it really depends on the variety. You might wanna check the back of your seed packet or look it up online what variety you're growing and see, um, see what the information is on that. But again, usually the information on the seed packets are under ideal conditions. So if you um, experience some cold weather or things aren't quite warm enough, it might take a little bit longer, but generally about 60 to 90 days. Okay, help with basil leaves getting eaten by worms. Okay, that seems to be a common problem and I have that problem too. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the growing herbs video over the weekend. If you haven't watched it, definitely go and check it out. We planted some herbs in one of my purple, fi uh, purple uh, mini raised beds. And if you aren't growing herbs right outside your kitchen door, you really need to because it's so much fun to just step outside, 
pick some herbs, throw them in your recipes, and it just makes cooking with fresh herbs so much fun. So um, as far as those little green worms, um, what you wanna do, first of all, is spray off your plants with water. Now, usually I, I don't recommend watering from the top, but it's a good way to kind of flush everything off your plants. If you have little aphids or little green worms, it's a good way to kind of get them off and make sure that there's they're not anymore on your plants. So you might have to go out there and kind of pick them off with your fingers. Um, and then if that doesn't work and they still keep coming back, I would suggest spraying them with neem oil. So um, I've got videos on how to do that. You can go and check those out and have all the, the details about how to do it. But neem oil is an organic, um, a pesticide and it does need to be sprayed regularly over you know several week period but it really does help with the chewing and sucking insects and you can do it from the very beginning before you even have a problem like I could be spraying these little seedlings right now um, and that way it avoids an infestation it's a lot easier to do prevention rather than go back and um, take care of a problem Okay, we do have another super chat. Thank you, Ocean Bound, so much. I really appreciate your $2 super chat. And Ocean Bound says, I love your advice. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. We love sharing um, about growing your own food and what we love to do. And I'm so glad it's been helpful for you. So thank you so much for showing your appreciation through the super chat. Okay, question from Nivea. Have you grown lunchbox peppers? No, I haven't. That sounds like a fun one. I'm imagining it's maybe a smaller variety that you can throw in your lunch. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, Irene, question. How long for potatoes to grow? I think mine is ready. I am no potato grower expert. We've only grown potatoes one time and we didn't have great success with them. We're not huge potato eaters, so I tend to only grow what we like to eat. So if anyone out there has had great success with potatoes, why don't you pop a little um, tip in the chat there for Irene. Okay, <laughs> let's see, any other questions? Um, Andrea, other than worm tea, what would you recommend as a fertilizer for peppers and everything else? as it is not available in Denmark. Um, Andrea, I would recommend, if you can, um, I would make some of your own compost. That's really the best fertilizer that you can use and it's absolutely free. So I would definitely um, get going on that. As far as a liquid fertilizer, um, you can make your own compost tea as well. You can soak compost in some water and make a liquid fertilizer, but it does need to be used right away or you can check your garden center for some organic liquid fertilizers. So, um, you know, I prefer to use organic. Um, that's just my preferred method. And I'm sure hopefully they'll have some good ones available there in, um, in Denmark. Okay, let's see here. Cliff, yeah, Cliff's from Idaho. So he might be the expert on growing potatoes. I know he probably grows potatoes up there. And learn to grow. Hi, learn to grow. We planted potatoes in your smart pot. Yeah, she just picked up some of my smart pots, I think the purple one, uh, maybe some black ones, I'm not sure, but I believe she just did a video on planting them with kids. So you can go and check out her YouTube channel for some more information on that. It's so much fun to grow with your kids. If you haven't yet, watch the Kids Gardening series. We did a couple of videos on that and we have the purple smart pots in the kids seed collection to help you get started. So let's take one more question, guys, and then we will sign off for today. Let's see here. Um, I really do appreciate everyone sharing our videos. Um, we're getting more and more people here on these live streams. Today we have almost passing last week's record. We have over 300 people. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch us here on YouTube. It's so much fun on the live streams because we get to share advice with each other. We also get to share resources and tips and videos and things that will help each other out grow your own vegetables. Okay, questions. I'm looking for one more question here. <laughs> Are the smart pots still on sale? Yes, our seed sale runs through today. Today is the very last day, so make sure you head to CallieKimGardeningHome.com and use the code SPRINGSEEDS for 15% off. Last day today at midnight Pacific time, the sale will end and that way you can stock up for the summer or for Mother's Day gifts. If you have a mom who likes to garden, I ship um, within 24 hours. So if you live here in the continental US, you should get your seeds in time for, um, for your mom or you can have me send them right to her just by putting her address in the shipping um, information. Okay, Samantha, how to get better drainage in your raised beds? 
What you want to do, Samantha, is make sure that your soil is really aerated. If you're dealing with heavy clay soil, you can add some good organic matter to your soil, such as shredded leaves. The worm castings also work really well to aerate your soil um, or compost. All those are great things to help aerate your soil. You can also add in some peat moss and um, that will help uh, things drain out. Also make sure that you are um, doing things that bring in the worms, like the leaves, shredded leaves really bring the worms in and those will naturally um, break your soil up and give you a lot better soil drainage. And we do have another super chat from Oscar Rodriguez. Hi, Oscar. How are you doing today? And he says, habaneros for the win. So Oscar, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for your $2 super chat. He loves growing habaneros and habaneros are a nice spicy hot pepper and absolutely delicious. So Oscar, I appreciate that. And thank you so much for the recommendation on a pepper to grow too. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today. We live stream every Monday, most Mondays anyway, at noon Pacific time. Share this with your friends, have them come join us. We have so much fun here and I really appreciate you joining me today. Make sure that you join um, our coffee walks here this week. We'll be posting one, probably not tomorrow, but probably Wednesday and maybe one or two other during the week. So let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed Alexia's super chat um, for $2. Thank you so much, Alexia. I'm sorry. I missed that and asked, what is your favorite pepper? Okay. Alexia, my favorite pepper, and I totally meant to say that is the California, <coughs> excuse me, the California wonder. Um, I've grown it for probably three or four years. It's a beautiful, um, bright red pepper. I actually um, posted a picture on my Instagram this morning of one that is not quite red yet, but it's a beautiful, it gets pretty large, very prolific. It's maybe about that size or so. It's a nice thick walled pepper. It's delicious for stuffing. It's really, really good on the grill. And that's definitely my favorite one. It's in my spring garden collection, I think my pepper collection, and I think I also have a yellow um, California Wonder in the small space seed collection. So great question, Alexi, and I really appreciate the $2 super chat as well. Okay, Bra Brandon, yes, I do also like Jimmy Nardello's. Um, I actually didn't get any seeds started this year. I had so many California Wonder seeds that I kind of went that direction, but Jimmy Nardello's are also a great one too. So guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed all the pepper tips. I really enjoyed um, talking with everyone today and we look forward to seeing you on the coffee walks this week and on the live stream next Monday. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.